I was thinking about being a foreigner. I was thinking about what does it mean to belong. The questions were like, when will you arrive to, you know, belong in one society or in one place? It doesn't mean the same to be a foreigner for everybody. It doesn't mean the same for African to be foreigner in Europe and for European in Africa. It doesn't mean the same. My name is Tesfaye Rukesa, I'm an Ethiopian painter. I grew up in Ethiopia and we are here uh, at the Palazzo uh, Bolani, the first Ethiopia pavilion uh, in the Venice Biennale. And these are my paintings. Ethiopia never had a pavilion in the Venice Biennale. And th th this question, you know, where almost in every artist in Ethiopia, you know, something we have been dreaming of, you know, since we were students. Um, I'm telling you, in terms of art, you know, even though we, we have individual, very talented artists, as a community, we kind of suffered because, you know, if you don't have the exposure, you don't have the market. And if you don't have the market, if you don't have the school, you know, everything suffers. So I, I went to, physically went to uh, the tourism minister and say, like, you know, um, we need to participate in this uh, Venice Biennale because it brings so much attention, so much positive attention to the country as well as to the artist community. Art is a medium of communication. If we can't communicate, you know, with the rest of the world, you know, uh, it's just, um, uh, you know, we are losing so much. And I think the Venice Biennale, and also, uh, you know, all the art shows that we do outside of the country actually brings the attention to the country back and to the artists. And this is the most important part of the communication. I want to use the human figures as a sort of language so that people can feel, you know, some, some emotions. And for me, um, you know, first and foremost, the face is very important. So it's very clear, you know, you have, in a very small area, you have everything. You know, whether you go in terms of material, you have hair on your face, the eyeballs, completely different materials, your teeth, you know, and the forms change, you know, quite a lot in small area. And that is, you know, like the greatest, like, asset for a painting. And then when you go after that, you know, the hands are very important because you can also make, you know, some gestures. You can transmit almost an emotion through just, you know, a hand movement. The, the, the figures from my paintings are not like particular people that I bring into imagination and paint. They are rather, you know, sort of things taken from everybody almost, like, you know, who, when I had a conversation with somebody else or when I see two people had a, have, having a conversation and there was something that involved me emotionally, so I will just take some, some snapshots, I would say. Little things, like a gesture or something, and I will put that into my painting. Sometimes you see like uh, a portrait, a figure, or like a hand in movement holding something, or like a group of people moving together. So actually I will collect from, you know, anywhere else, you know, any material that can go into the painting. When I was a child, until my late teenager, there was no like art history book that I know, so, um, most of the things that what I did was, you know, copying uh, a painting from the church. In Ethiopia, we, wherever you go in the church, you see like very bright, very strong paintings. And those are, you know, the kind of art I, uh, I used to know at that time. So I was copying them and taught myself how to draw, how to paint. 
My first intention wasn't to be a painter or an artist. What I wanted to do is like to have the ability to draw and paint, and that was my intention. Now, the beginning of a painting is, you know, you have this lots of promises, you know, empty canvas. You don't know what's going to happen. But at the same time, the process demands a trust. You know, you have to trust in the process and you have to believe in every suggestion you get from you, you head, practically. So the thing what I do is, you know, every little thing, I just draw it as it comes into my mind. And then most of the time, the canvas becomes full at some point, and then I start to take off things that I don't need anymore. And then the painting becomes a little bit quiet and becomes empty again. And then I fill it up again and then take some down. So it's just like up and down, you know, full, empty. And then at some point, you know, there will be some leftovers, which I cannot take down anymore. And then they outlive them as they are, so that becomes a painting. The, the biggest struggle is when I sometimes find, you know, something, you know, which I consider precious too early into, in, in the painting. And then what I do is actually, like, I try to keep it until the end, and I don't want to destroy it, and then try to work, you know, around it for a long time. And then it becomes, like, a very frustrating uh, process. And then at some point, it happens very, uh, very often, at some point I decided to destroy the very things that I want to keep. And then when I start to destroy this thing, and suddenly the painting becomes, like, complete. With this painting, is what I was doing is actually, I was thinking about, you know, uh, being a foreigner. I was thinking about, you know, what does it mean to be to belong, and I was raising these questions and kind of triggering my mind so that you know, produce images and you know, um, forms and so on. And that was like the biggest uh, arch for me to follow, and. You know, I was raising all these questions, and then I was expecting my mind to come up with some image colors, forms, and I was following. So that's why I always say, like, you know, you have to trust the process, because the end, you know, you're going to experience later on.